This presentation is an introduction to guided surgery and specifically to the thin layer drill guide system offered by Guided Surgery Solutions. Our guide system consists of a thin layer tubeless guide and a thin layer tube guide along with custom disposable drill stops which are made for your drill set. These provide depth control. The inner diameter of the drill stops matches the outer diameter of your drills and the outside diameter of the drill stop matches the inner diameter of the guide tubes. These two guides are identical and they're both CT derived except that this guide does not have a tube in it. Conventional tube guides have design limitations that limit their application. As most of us already know, they're often unusable in posterior sites because of the stacking effect of the drill above the tube requiring extra vertical clearance. They often block physical and visual access to the site and the implant trajectory cannot be altered at the time of surgery. There are also issues with fit and retention. Guided Surgery Solutions offers a set of drill guides which solve these problems. The steps involved in guided surgery include data acquisition, data merging, restorative driven treatment planning, and guide usage. For data acquisition, we'll need a patient scan. And if you have a scanner in your office, this can be done with an alternate tray with fiducial markers on it. If you do not have a scanner in your office, then a scan appliance can be made and the patient wears the scan appliance when they have their scan done at a scan center or in a mobile scanner. We would also need a stone model scan of the arch of interest and if you're using a scan center then the stone model is sent to us with a scan appliance on it. You'll also need some sort of future tooth position data and we'll describe how that can be determined. If you have a scanner in your office, you can use this method using a disposable impression tray with fiducial markers. These glass beads are on adhesive strips and can be adhered to the back of the tray as shown here. The impression is taken and while the tray is still in the patient's mouth, they are scanned. The tray is then removed, the model is poured, and the once it sets, the model is scanned in the tray and that would be the data set needed in order to produce a drill guide. If you have, if you're using a mobile scanner or a scan center, it's necessary to make a scan appliance as shown here with fiducial markers on it and the patient will wear this while they're being scanned and then this will be placed on the stone model that you send to us and we will scan the stone model with this scan appliance on it. For edentulous cases, an appliance can be made in much the same fashion. If the denture fits reasonably well, you, we can do the dual scan method whereby the fiducial markers are placed on the denture itself with triad or uh, with the adhesive glass bead markers. Future tooth position can be discerned in a number of ways, including articulated models. If the models are hand articulated, then we would just use those. If not, a bite registration is taken and the models are mounted on a plastic disposable articulator and these models are then scanned and this data is incorporated into your surgical plan. Required, the data has to be merged. So the patient scan and the stone model scans can be merged on the basis of the fiducial markers on the impression tray or based upon the fiducial markers on the scan appliance. We merge in multiple sets of stone models by doing visual merges of stone model to stone model. The surgical plan is restorative driven and future tooth position is a key concept in planning and future tooth position can be determined with the use of virtual abutments in the software, an existing prosthesis, articulated models, or a model of a wax up. The final step in guided surgery is use of the guide. So we offer a tube guide and a tubeless guide which is used with our minimum vertical clearance protocol and the custom drill stops. The thin layer guide system offers drill guides that have retentive, stable fit, they're usable in posterior areas. You have access both visually and physically to the surgical site for flap reflection. They provide depth control and you can change the entry point at surgery. The implant planning software is free. You can use this with most standard implant drills as long as they have a minimum length of about 36-35 millimeters total and they can be used with all implant systems. In review, the steps to guided surgery involve a patient scan, a stone model scan, incorporating future tooth position data, merging data together, 
into the Blue Sky Plan software, devising a surgical plan, and then using the thin layer drill guides. Using the system, accurate implant placement is predictable. We've developed simplified methods to discern future tooth position, and these include the use of articulated models, a temporary bridge, an RPD, a wax up, a full denture, or in the case of an overdenture, being able to visualize the dentulous soft tissue ridge in the software. In this first situation, this illustrates planning with articulated models. Initially, the implant is placed in line with this first bicuspid, and the virtual abutment is placed, which is seven millimeters in diameter, and this approximates the size of a bicuspid tooth. And by placing the mesial of this abutment on the distal of this tooth, the spacing between the implant and the tooth is perfect. And it's based upon the future tooth size. This implant is then duplicated. The duplicate is moved over to the distal. A 10 millimeter abutment is placed because this is going to be a molar. The abutment is placed in contact with the bicuspid abutment. And now the spacing between these two implants is ideal because each is based upon the size of the future tooth. On the stone model, the position of these implants can be adjusted as if you were setting teeth on a model. It's very precise and you can get ideal positions. To get the buccal lingual angulation, we bring in the, the articulated models. The software will project a cross section of the articulated models and superimpose it over a cross section of the alveolus, as you see here. So that in planning this case, the implant, the vertical height of the implant is positioned. The soft tissue outline overlying the surgical side is obvious, and the opposing tooth at the correct vertical dimension is visible. Therefore, all one has to do is place the implant and line the center line up with the lingual cusp of the opposing tooth. You can then go to the 3D reconstruction, and you can visually see the relationship between this implant and the root of the adjacent tooth. In this case, the density threshold has been adjusted to eliminate the bone and visualize only the roots. So this is an example of using virtual abutments and articulated models to discern future tooth position without the need of a wax up. The next case involves using a temporary bridge to discern future tooth position. So this case was planned with two alginates, one of the patient without their prosthesis and one with the temporary bridge in place. In the software, the model was made translucent and the implants were each placed down the center of the tooth and they were adjusted buccolingual to be in optimal position, central fossa incisal edges, as you can see here. And in the cross-sectional views, the surgical envelope and the prosthetic, prosthetic envelope are visible in the same image, which makes it very simple to place the implant in the ideal position. And in this case, the bone cooperated and we were able to place the implants within the surgical envelope, but in ideal prosthetic positions, as you can see for the lateral, the cuspid, and the bicuspid. So that's an example of using a temporary bridge to discern future tooth position and to plan the case. In this case, future tooth position is based upon a removable partial denture. This flipper happened to be nicely made. The teeth are well positioned in the correct position and they're sized appropriately. And as you can see, an alginate of the patient without their RPD, an alginate of the patient wearing their RPD, and we're able to place the implants in the correct positions, mesial distal, and then we go to the cross section, buccal lingual, and you can see the alveolus, the superimposed central incisor, and the implant position. So you have the prosthetic envelope and the surgical envelope, and you're able to place the implant in an ideal position. The next example is where a wax up was done, and an impression of a wax up model was taken and poured in stone. And again, these two models were all that was necessary to plan the case. Like in the previous cases, the implants were placed in the model, and then the cross-sectional view of the model was superimposed over the alveolus, and one can see the implant, the bone, and the wax-up tooth. In the next case, it was done by the dual scan method, where fiducial markers were placed on a denture. The patient was scanned wearing the denture, and then the denture alone was scanned. The two data sets were merged, so that in the cross-sectional view, you get the alveolus, and you get an outline of the denture. And so here is the 
occlusal surface of the denture tooth. You can see the position of the implant in the center of that molar. And so you can have the implant placement here, the center line of the implant coming up right through the molar. You can get an ideal implant placement. And finally, for an overdenture case, we took an impression of the ridge, merged that with the patient scan in the cross-sectional view, and this is critical for an overdenture case. The outline of the soft tissue ridge is superimposed on the hard tissue. And so when one plans the implant placements for this overdenture case, we're able to place the implants through the apex of the soft tissue ridge instead of through the lingual of the soft tissue ridge, which would have been a surgical mistake necessitating a thicker lingual flange to accommodate the attachment housing. So for overdenture cases, it's essential to be able to see a superimposition of the soft tissue ridge overlying the hard tissue ridge so that the implant can be placed correctly. It's extremely common in the lower anterior region for the soft tissue ridge to be anterior to the hard tissue ridge, which can result in a surgical error if the implant is placed only based upon the bony anatomy. So again, this brief summary is an attempt to show you the data acquisition, the merging, some of the planning, and the ways in which we ascertain in simple form the future tooth position. And the overdenture case as a finished case looked like this. And this is pretty typical of the kinds of results one gets using the system.